This lesson is for section 9.5 on parabolas. Today our main objective is going to be to graph parabolas in the coordinate plane and then in our next lesson we'll actually write equations of parabolas. Now we should already be really comfortable with graphing quadratic functions. So quadratic functions are of the form, um, this is in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. Over here, if you have x equals ay squared plus by plus c, those are called relations, if you remember, because they're not actually functions, they don't pass that vertical line test. But we should be really familiar with this because we've graphed in both standard form and in vertex form. So today's lesson is an introduction into a brand new form called the conix form. Okay, so both of these equations here are written in the conics form. Now you'll be required to both graph in this form as well as write equations in this form, so make sure you're comfortable with both of these equations. So let's talk about how this new form is similar to some of the other conic sections. Um, if you look here, x minus h, y minus k, both of them have this form here, and that is going to indicate to you where your vertex lies. So h comma k still represents the vertex of your parabola. So that's pretty much the only similarity when you compare the equations of the parabolas to the other conic sections because um, this equation here, both of them, neither of these, look anything like you know an ellipse or a hyperbola or even the circle. So there's some major differences that I want to point out. So if you see a quadratic term and only one quadratic term, meaning um, here we only see the x being squared because the y here is linear, okay, y minus k is a linear term over here, the um, y is being squared and the x minus h is linear. But anytime you only see one quadratic term, that means that you're dealing with a parabola as opposed to any of the other conics. Now, whichever term is squared will indicate to you how you graph the parabola. So for example, if you have the quadratic term as the x term, then you're gonna graph a parabola that either opens up or opens down, okay? And if you have the quadratic on the y term, then it's either gonna open to the right, like the picture here, or it could open to the left as well. So that's how you would tell just the general shape. Now both of these equations are also different from the rest of the conic sections because they have this value in front of the um, linear term, so it's always going to be placed in front of the linear term, um, and it's just a constant. So we have to actually figure out what this p-value is because that actually helps us to graph the, the parabola. Um, we'll talk about it you know, more in depth, but basically that p-value will also dictate how the graph opens. It could open up or down or left or right, and that's how you're going to be able to tell it based off of this p-value in front of the um, linear term. So if p is positive and your function, um, you're looking at a quadratic function, meaning that the, the square term is on the x, then your parabola opens up. If p is negative, then it's going to open down. And that's pretty consistent with what we saw with, you know, a positive um, ax squared that would open it up. If it was a negative ax squared, then it, the parabola would open down. Now, if p is positive and you have a quadratic on the y term, then it's going to open up to the right. So in this particular little graph here, the p would have to have been positive here. If p is negative, then it opens to the left. Okay, so what is this p value that we keep referring to? Well, p is the distance from the vertex to the focus and the distance from the focus to something called the directrix. So that's a new vocabulary term for us. Um, the directrix is a line that is going to be perpendicular to the axis of symmetry of the parabola. So using this graph to the right here, we have a point called the vertex of the parabola. And through that vertex, we know we have an axis of symmetry. Okay. And um, this line in red, that's called the directrix. Directrix. So it's always going to be behind the vertex. All right, so this is technically behind the vertex. We also have a focus. And that point will always lie inside the parabola. So your parabola should always um, open up around the focus. Now the distance from that vertex to your directrix, this distance is always p units long and the distance from the vertex to the focus is also p units long. So that just comes right, right off of the uh, definition of p. So p is the distance from the vertex to the focus and from the focus to the directrix. Now we also have a brand new vocabulary term called the lattice rectum. I am not even making that up. That is legit its name. Um, it's a segment. I'm going to draw it in first and then I'll describe it. So it's this segment here. Okay, this is the lattice rectum couple things about it. Um, the overall distance of this lattice rectum is 4p units. So if you went from end to end, it's 4p. Um, but we can go halfway and break this up. We know that from 
the point that lies on the parabola to the focus, this is 2p units, and from the focus to the other point on the opposite side, so these are symmetric points here, this is also 2p units. So the lattice rectum will always be parallel to the directrix, okay, and it will always be perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. It will have endpoints on the parabola that are symmetric to one another, and it will always go through your focus. So it's very important that we do find the lattice rectum because it helps us to find additional points that lie on our parabola. So we're not just using it because it's a funny word, it's actually useful to graph. All right, let's get started with our first example. Now, anytime you graph a conic, you want to make sure you identify the correct shape. Now, parabolas are really easy to spot because they always have one quadratic and one linear term. So this is definitely a parabola. And because it's on the y term, that squared term is on the y, I know that this is either going to open left or right. Now, I want to always draw a little sketch to myself. And because this value out in front of the linear term is negative, I know that this has to open left. So because that's negative, it's going to open left. So I draw myself a little sketch to remind myself that when I graph the parabola, it should open up to the left. Now the next thing I like to do is find the vertex, okay? Just be careful when you find the vertex. I know this is really easy, but it's also easy to make mistakes on the parabola ones because um, a lot of times students will just read this left to right. And if you read from left to right, you'll think that the vertex is negative one, negative two. But because the y term is listed first, it's a little bit misleading. Your vertex here is actually negative two, negative one. So just be really careful about that, that you always correctly identify your vertex. Because if you get that part wrong, then everything else kind of falls apart. So I'm going to graph negative two, negative one first. So here's where my vertex is. Okay, now after we graph that vertex, everything else that we graph relies on finding the p-value. So that's what I'm going to do next. It's very important that we actually solve for p and we solve for it correctly. So if you think back to how we um, gave you the equation of the parabola, the p-value was in front of the linear term, and it was attached to a 4. So in other words, 4p is equal to the constant out in front of this linear term, so negative 12 is equal to 4p. So p does not equal negative 12, 4p will equal negative 12, which means that p is negative 3. So we'll use the absolute value of p to actually find the focus and the directrix, as well as um, the additional points that lie on the parabola. So we don't want to use negative because obviously distance can't be negative, and p represents the distance between your vertex and your focus. So if our vertex is at negative 2, negative 1, and our uh, focus lies three units away, that means it lies to the left okay, of your vertex. So I'm going to translate this point to find my focus. I will translate only the x coordinate. I'm going to move that three units to the left, which means I'm subtracting three. So I should have a focus that's at negative five, negative one. So if I graph that point, negative five, negative one, here's my focus. All right, now we still have to graph a directrix, um, and the directrix is supposed to be perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. So I'm just going to dash in the axis of symmetry. And we also want to write the equation of the axis of symmetry. So that's one of the required parts that you need to um, write. You can just do AOS for axis of symmetry. Now the axis of symmetry in this case is the equation of a line um, where it's y equals a constant. So it's y equals negative 1 here. So make sure you don't just write negative 1, it's actually the equation of a line. So because it's a horizontal line, it's going to be y equals negative 1. All right, so now let's find the directrix. Um, for the directrix, we know that its distance away from the vertex is also p units long. So remember, from f to v, from the focus to the vertex, that's p units long. And from your vertex to your directrix should also be p units long. So the directrix is always behind uh, the, ver the vertex. And since this particular um, parabola opens to the left, that means the vertex... I'm sorry, the directrix would be to the right of the vertex, okay? So let's write the equation of the line before we even graph it. Um, I know that if I look at a vertex of negative 2, negative 1, and the directrix it lies to the right of that point, then I'm just going to add p, so I'm going to add 3 to the x value here. So the equation for the directrix, this time, because it's going to be a vertical line, it should be x equals, and then if I add 3 here, I get positive 1. So if I actually graph this, you can see why this is the equation x equals 1, but I wanted to make sure that you're able to write that equation before you even graph it. You should be able to translate the point correctly and come up with the equation without a picture. Okay, so we're almost done with this parabola, but I forgot to label some parts, sorry. So let's call that the AOS, axis of sim, and this is the directrix. 
Okay, now when you find additional points that lie on the parabola, um, you're going to use the lattice rectum. So we can't just assume that this is while the parabola opens. We have to find some more specific points on the parabola. So remember, your lattice rectum is a line segment that is parallel to the directrix and that goes through the focus. Okay, so it's something that looks like that. Now the reason why we need to use the lattice rectum is because the endpoints of that lattice rectum, they tell you the points that lie on the graph of the, uh, ver the, the parabola. So we can assume that it would look like that and like this once we find the actual lattice rectum. So to find the lattice rectum, we need the p-value once more. So to find the endpoints of that lattice rectum, um, we actually just start with the focus and we can translate the focus up to p units because remember if you go back to the picture above, the, the difference between the point on the parabola and your focus is always 2 p units. Okay, So let's find that value before we even plot it. Let's actually find it by um, shifting this focus. All right, So 2 p is going to be 6 units. Okay, so 2p is 6 units long. And if I am shifting my focus up and down, that means I'm going to affect the y value. So the points on the parabola, we'll always list them as well, the points on the parabola will share the same exact x value, but the y value will be 6 units up from the focus, which makes that the point negative 5, 5, and a point that is 6 units down from your focus, which makes the point negative 5, negative 7. All right, so I realize that you don't actually have to write the coordinates out ahead of time because you could just come to your focus and then go up one, two, three, four, five, six units because that would represent two times p. And you could go to your focus again and then go down one, two, three, four, five, six units. So this is absolutely correct. Um, it's just that I would like you guys to start doing things like this ahead of time just so you get the connection to when you start writing equations of parabolas. The better you are at being able to translate points and really understand how the, um, the shape works, then you're going to be really comfortable with writing equations of the parabolas and all the, all the other conic sections. All right, so all I have left to do now is connect the vertex with that other point. So it's going to look something like this and like this. All right, so that's the end of the problem. So make sure you have all of the correct information listed to the left and that you've also shown all of that information in the graph. All right, in our last example, we have uh, another parabola here because we only see one quadratic term and then a linear term over here. Now this particular parabola will have to open down because the p-value is negative and we also see that this is the x being squared. So it's either going to open up or down and because the p is negative, it opens down. So I'm going to draw a little sketch here to remind myself that it should open downward. Now our vertex is a little bit more straightforward than the last one. We can just go left to right. The x value is negative 2, the y value is positive 1. So we'll go ahead and graph that, negative 2, positive 1. Okay, now we, we need to always find the p-value. So remember, you take your constant, which is negative 8, and you set it equal to 4p. So in this case, p will equal negative 2. Now I'm going to find the focus and also my directrix by using that p value because the distance between the vertex and the focus is p units long. So I can take the point negative 2, 1 and I can translate this coordinate. Now to think about how it would be translated, think about the sketch. Your vertex lies here and your focus has to lie inside the parabola. So your focus will lie below the vertex. So I would take the point negative 2, 1, and I would subtract from the y value so that I would move it down. So I'm going to take that point and keep the x value the same, but now I subtract 2 from 1, so I get negative 1. So the focus should be at negative 2, negative 1. So this was the vertex there. Now when you find the directrix, um, this time you know that the directrix has to lie behind the parabola, right? So it's going to lie above it. I like to just draw in a sketch too to remind myself where the directrix should be. And this is also p units away from the vertex. Now this is what's kind of weird about um, writing the equation of the, of the directrix. First, make sure that you understand it's a horizontal line or a vertical line. In this case, it's going to be horizontal. So we know that the equation should be y equals. Now for this particular um, horizontal line, we know it's shifted up two units from the vertex. So all I have to do is move the one up two units, right? That's the y value. I don't do anything to the x at all. And I know that the equation must be y is equal to three. So I just add two to the one to get three. You can actually see it when you graph it. If you um, shift up two points here from the vertex and you draw a horizontal line, 
you have a um, directrix with an equation y is equal to 3. So again, if you can work on trying to write that equation before you even graph it, the better off you're going to be when you start writing equations of the uh, parabolas. All right, we've only got one last thing to do. We have to find the additional points that lie on the graph of the parabola. So um, to find those points, remember you're using the lattice rectum, and you're really breaking it down to just the p-value. If you look at your focus, okay, you're going to take this point and you're going to translate it this time left and right. We're looking for these two points here. Now, if the distance between your focus and one of the points on the parabola is 2p units long, that means you're going to add or subtract 4 units from the x value. Okay? The reason why it's subtracting from the x value or adding to the x value is because you're trying to move it left or right. Okay? So if we are finding um, the point on the left, we would subtract 4 from negative 2, so we get one of the points at negative 6, negative 1. And the other point would be, if you add 4, um, you get the point 2, negative 1. So if I plot those two points, 2, negative 1, and negative 6, negative 1, uh, we are going to be able to graph the parabola now. So it's going to have a solid line because it's a less than or equal to symbol, and then we'll worry about the shading now. All right, this time, when you plug in a point, you're not going to be able to just to plug in the vertex. And the reason is, is that the vertex lies on the boundary between your shaded region and your non-shaded region. So you're going to have to pick a different point. Now, I would suggest, I guess, picking the focus, because clearly the focus lies on the inside of that parabola. So if I pick my focus, I end up with, um, if I plug in negative 2, negative 1 here, I end up with 0 is less than or equal to negative 8 times negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So we have 0 is less than or equal to 16. Now that is a true statement, right? 0 is less than or equal to 16. That is true. So we will shade where the focus is. So we would shade on the inside of the parabola. Okay? Alrighty, folks, that is the end of the lesson. Make sure you come to class ready to ask questions. Nice job. See you manana. Sorry, guys. Uh, I forgot one thing. It is about 12.45 in the morning, so please forgive me for not being awake. Um, I forgot to show you where the axis of sim was, so we did not do the equation of the axis of sim, so the axis of sim here is going to be the line x is equal to negative 2. And that faux show is the end of the lesson.